And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be doing some great projects and we're trying to build a tower. We're talking about a huge tower of Babel. This is the expansion for Seven Wonders. This is the latest one, the third one I believe. Uh, put out by Repost Productions, as of day here in the, in the US. Plays from two to eight players, uh, assuming you have one of the other expansions. And uh, so let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. Uh, I'll talk about the two different modules and then I'll see you on the side and I'll tell you what I think. Seven Wonders Babel comes with two modules. One is the Tower of Babel, the other one is the Great Projects. Let's talk about the Tower of Babel first. After you've received your Wonder Board and your three coins at the beginning of the game, everyone will receive three Babel tiles placed face down. And these tiles are actually pretty good size. I mean, you can see my hand here, they're, they're actually quite big. They're bigger than I imagined. And so um, what you'll do is you'll look at these and see what special abilities these things will do in the future. And you will basically select one of these to keep face down and you'll pass the other two to the right. We'll get to what some of these do uh, in a little bit, but essentially you'll look at the abilities and you'll figure out which one you would keep. You pass the other two. Now, so basically I have kept one and I will have received two from the player to my left. From these two, I'm gonna look at them and figure out which one of these two I actually wanna keep. I would put that one there, I'd pass the other one, and then I would end up receiving the third one from the last player. So I will have three of these in front of me, face down at the beginning of the game. Now what you'll be doing over the course of the game is building these towers, the Babel Tower tiles. You'll be putting them there, they'll be going around. Now there's two sides of the board. This board is for five to eight players and actually has slots for four places. The other side of the board is for two to four players. And if you're playing with three or four, it will actually use all three spots. If you're playing with two players, one of them will just stay like this all the time and you'll just use two of these. So let's talk about how this thing gets built. Uh, let's use the bigger side of the board and when these things happen. On your turn, instead of one of the main actions that you had before, one of the things you can do is discard one of the cards that you would normally do something else with. And then you would place a Babel tile face down near the board. Now, after everyone has resolved all the cards that, that they have placed down, the Babel tile or tiles that have been placed here will get put. Now let's say two people built Babel Towers. Uh, we would flip them over and we can see that this is, has a number three, this has a number 12, the smaller one goes first. And we also see this little wheel here, it says it goes clockwise. So this would get played face up right here clockwise and the second one would get played here clockwise. We'll talk about what these do in a moment. Essentially these are special events or, or things that kind of change the rules of the game for the rest of the game until it gets something that gets placed on it. For instance, later on the next turn, maybe somebody else plays a tower tile and it goes there. And then maybe the next turn someone plays a tile like this. Well, now that there's four here on this board, when the next player plays one, it's gonna go on top of the first one. And so this will cover this up. And now there's these three plus this. So there's, at the most, there's gonna be four of them in this, in this uh, uh, up to five, to, uh, five to eight player game. There's always gonna be a, a maximum of four of them going on at once. Now, also when you play these tiles, you're gonna get points at the end of the game. Uh, if, you, if you play one of the three that you get, you get two points. If you play two of them, you get five. If you play three, you get 10. So two, five, and 10 points, whether you play one, two, or all three of them by the end of the game. Now let's look at what these do. I've got these grouped together. If you see it plus A with a red, it means you have to spend a coin, uh, as many coins as what age you're in. So ages one, two, or three, you're gonna spend one, two, or three coins when you build a wonder, or when you build a blue card, or when you chain, or when you build the military card. We also have things that say you cannot, uh, you do not have to spend resources when you build a wonder or resources when you uh, build a military card. These ones essentially, uh, you have to, you can pay one less when you're uh, getting one of these from one of your neighbors. Uh, and same thing for the resources. Or sometimes you have to pay more one, uh, one more than normal when you use the science or the resources from your neighbor. These ones change the military. So for example, if you were gonna get one point, you get none. If you're gonna get three, you get one. If you're gonna get five, you get three. So this makes military weaker at that point while this is out. Well, this is if you're gonna get minus one, you actually get two minus ones. 
This one allows people to get free resources for either of you. It's just like as if that card was in front of you. Uh, and again, these are all on the Babel Tower and it's they're open to everybody. So when you put one down, it pretty much affects everybody until it's covered. This one says if you have one of the brown cards that has only one resource on it, it acts as an infinite amount of those. There's another one that says if you have two or one of the ones that says this or that, you can no longer use those. You can only use the single brown resource cards while this is out. This one, These ones, uh, for example, for blue cards, you cannot use resources to build them. For every one resource, you have to use a coin to build them. Same thing for this, but now it's for the purple cards. Uh, this one says you can, uh, for free, you can chain a card uh, from one of your neighbors for free. These ones say basically um, when you build a blue one, you get coins equal to the age that you're in. This one is when you chain something, you get the amount of coins that the age is in. And then here, if you build a uh, purple, you get five coins. And then there's three actual ones that uh, are just clouds that you can kind of make up your own. And the last one is basically is these specific yellow cards that you can no longer use while those are while this one's out. And it comes with a new scoring pad. There's two little bonus rounds, one for each of the modules. And again, for the, the Tower of Babel, you get two, it even says it right on there, two, five, or 10 points, depending on you played one, two, or three of them. That's the Tower of Babel. Let's look at the great projects. At the beginning of each age, you will shuffle these cards. There's one, two, three, four, five. And these cards are huge. Look at this, they're bigger than my hand. I mean, they're really cool looking. You get one of these and you shuffle them up and only one of these will be used this age. For instance, it could be a factory or it could be a Belvedere. The artwork on these are really cool. And since they're so large, um, they're very interesting looking. It could be double walls, it could be cranes, or in the first age, it could also be a Rampart Road. Now, how these things work is simple. There are gonna be a certain amount of participation tokens put on this. There's only one of them for each age. Now there's gonna be a participation token, one less than how many players there are. So let's say there's five players, so you put four tokens on there. Now what this means is anytime you play a yellow card, if you want to, you can spend one dollar and one resource of stone, and you get to take one of these participation tokens in front of you. Now how this works is this great uh, project will get built if all these are taken. Now you can end up having more than one of these, but you can't take more than one per turn. If all these are taken by the end of the age, this is completed. If it's completed, everybody that has one of these will get this reward, four coins. Um, and anybody that did not participate, nothing bad happens because it was actually built. But let's say uh, four, th uh, three of the people started to uh, grab those tokens and there's one left over. At the end of the age, if it is not completed, the people who do not have one of these, meaning the ones that did not contribute at all, have to take the penalty. And so in this case, you have to get rid of all your coins. And for example, this one, if you uh, get the reward, this allows you to get a token that looks just like this. There's lots of tokens that come with this. And then later on during the game, you get to build a building for free. If, you, if it didn't get built and you didn't help, the penalty is you have to get rid of one of your brown cards. If at any time you cannot pay, uh, pay the penalty, Depending on the age you're in, you get one of these minus one, minus two, or minus three, depending on the age, and that gives you minus points at the end of the game. Some of the other ones in the first age, we got double walls. The reward is you get one military point. The bad one is the penalty is you get to, you have to put this over your over your wonder, and for the rest of the game, you lose the ability to use the resource or benefit of that wonder. This goes right on top of your wonder board. That one's a really bad penalty. Most of these, the penalties are worse than the reward is what I found. This one is uh, you, you get this token for the reward and you don't have to spend any resources to get your wonder. And if you, the penalty would be losing a military card that you have built. And then we have the factory. Yeah, the reward is this token, which later on allows you to participate in another great project without caring about what color card you have to play. And this says you have to get rid of one of the silver uh, cards that you've built. Let's look at some of the other ones. I'm just gonna show you some different ones. This one, if the reward is for every group of uh, unique three science, you get an extra three points and you'd lose a blue card for the penalty. This one is the, the reward is an extra piece of military power. Throwing away a brown card is the penalty. We have this one, the smelter, where the, pe the, the um, reward is one point uh, for the wonder and his throwing away a silver card. This one is getting a double military for the reward. And this is you get to throw away, uh, discard any two military uh, tokens of your choice for the penalty. 
And this last one I'll show you here, it gets you one point for every purple that you or your neighbors have, and you'd have to get rid of a science if you did not participate and it didn't get built, that would be the penalty there. And the scoring section here actually has a line for this. We actually used the wrong line. We used the Babel line for this one, um, but you would basically have another line for those tokens that you get from that, and then it just gets added up like normal. All right, there's Seven Wonders Babel. So what do I think about this expansion? I really like it a lot. I got a chance to get a sneak peek of this at, at Gen Con uh, with the Rebos production guys. And uh, let me tell you what I like about it. Let's talk about the Tower of Babel first. Um, now, when you play this one, there is, it's only one more action. I mean, you're just, hey, I can now bury a car, uh, discard a card and, and, and build the tower. But what happens is when you're playing with five to eight players, there's gonna be four of those, up to four of those different events happening at the same time. To me, I loved it because it did kind of change your strategy about not only what you were going to go for, what you were gonna do, but when you were gonna do it. And I really like that because you know, you might really want to go for a certain strategy depending on the cards that you have or depending on what cards you don't have in front of you, your neighbors, and things like that. And this is going to kind of change that. For instance, um, even when you're drafting at the beginning of the game, I know my buddy Greg there loves to use the blue buildings to get lots of his points. He always tries to go for that strategy. So when I have the cards, if I get the one that taxes him for every one he builds that's blue, well, shoot, I'm keeping that one because I know I'm going to play it because he's going to be playing those. Interesting types of things, even from drafting what you know how, the, how your friends play. And then, you know, when you're playing them, for instance, towards the end of the game, I was at the end of the second age, and we just built our third wonder, and we had one of the ones that taxes you by the, the amount of age uh, for anyone that builds any one of their wonders. So we built the last, our last wonder, second to last turn in the second age. I built the, the Tower of Babel on the last turn there. And now, for the rest of the game, or the whole third age, when, as long as it doesn't get covered up by the end of the game there, people are having to spend more money to build the wonders, and it's slowing them down. So it really throws a speed bump in people's plans. I like the ones, you know, you can, hey, I'm not doing good at military right now. I'm gonna play the one that uh, that's gonna not hurt me as much. So there's a lot of cool things that might actually change the, the way that you're playing, and I really like that. The other thing I really liked about it is that for once you actually do care about what the people on the other side of the table are doing that aren't your neighbors. Because you could be looking over there and seeing what they're building, what they're doing, and that might change uh, you know, which tile you're going to play. Oh, this guy's running away with this over there. I'm going to play something that's going to stop him from borrowing this from that guy or doing this or that. Really cool. I really like this aspect of the Babel Tower. I'd say the downside to it is there's a lot going on. Even though it's a simple mechanic, meaning I'm playing a card and playing a tile, when there's four of them going on at once, Wow, four more things to think about in addition to everything else. It's a lot there, so you probably want to be an experienced player before you play this one. But I do like it quite a lot. It will slow the game down a little bit, especially the first few times you play it, because you've got the drafting at the beginning, and then you've got people thinking a little bit more because there's four more things interacting with them, three or four, depending on how many players you're playing with. Uh, and the, the other thing I did that, that's a little takeaway is, is you know because there's so much going on, a lot of times like people will be building cards and forgetting to fill the tax, or building cards and forgetting to have it cheaper because it's like there's so much going on. So we found that like at the end of the round, once everybody at the end of the, you know, the turn, people play stuff, and it's like we all have to say, okay, uh, did anyone play any blues? Okay, tax. No, did anyone play any purple? You know, we kind of have to go through that every round to make sure nobody forgot it because there's just it's so easy to forget these things. It's a little downside, but overall, it's really really good. Uh, now let's go to the great project side of things. This one uh, changed the game a lot less, meaning it's just a very simple thing. Hey, am I going to participate or not? You can add this easily to any of the other expansions and you're not adding that too much complexity. It's very simple. Uh, I mean, it just raised, if you play with just this, you're raising the base game just a tiny bit. So it's not a lot of complexity. It's not, it's not terribly uh, amazing, but I do like it because it does twist it just a little bit. For instance, there was one thing there I had, I was building up a bunch of science. I had three of one and I had two of an hour I was about to build a third. And the penalty for the one that was out there was you have to lose one of your science cards. And there were two participation tokens left. And I'm like, and I had to build a purple building to be able to, to, to do this. And like the cards are coming around. I'm like, oh man, oh man, I hope I get a purple or I hope somebody else does it. And it's really cool because the penalties are usually way worse than the rewards. So it's like, if the penalty is gonna hurt you, you're really hoping that everybody else finishes the project so that you don't get the penalty. And if you are the one that has gotten some of those and there's some left, sometimes you want to like purposely not finish it, just get one and not finish it to really hurt the other players. So it is really interesting. I mean, it's, it does again, change the way you play it, but it's super simple. Uh, but I did like that one too. Uh, so you can play them easily both together once you've played them each once. Um, and it's great. You can play with leaders as well, uh, cities. 
So overall, I really love this expansion. I think if you like Seven Wonders and you've played it a lot, this is a no-brainer. Seven Wonders Babel. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.